I also started just internalizing the fact that dopamine is so subjective. There are objective aspects to dopamine and how much is released, but there's also some subjective effects to dopamine. One of the things that you can do in order to generally just be a happier person, especially if you're a person in pursuit of long-term goals of any kind, is the longer that you can extend that positive phase of the dopamine release. And the more that you can blunt the pain response to that, the better. And you can actually do this cognitively. I, I used to joke with my lab that when we'd publish a paper, I would get really excited, but I wouldn't allow myself to get too excited. What I wanted to do instead, and what I've still tried to do is try and extend the arc of that positive experience as long as I possibly can, simply by thinking back like, oh, that was really cool. I really enjoyed doing that work. I really enjoyed the discovery. I really enjoyed doing that with the people that I was working with at the time. What a pleasure that was. I can get this very easily from pictures of people and things like Costello that I really enjoy, trips that I've taken. So you can extend pleasure without having to engage in the behavior over and over. That's extending the arc of that dopamine release. As well, it offsets some of the pain of not having that experience occur over and over and over again. Now for the high performers out there, you're probably familiar with this. Many people who have a big achievement, their first thoughts are, well, now what? What am I going to do next? How am I ever going to exceed that? And indeed, many people who are very high on this kind of dopamine sensation and novelty seeking scale uh, are prone to addiction. They're prone to the rabid pursuit of external goals of exteroception to the neglect of these internal mechanisms that allow them to feel calm and happy.